Good morning, welcome to Southwold Pier and this week's video. Um, three weeks ago, I released this video and in it, I wanted to find out whether my new Olympus OMD E M1X kit could replace my Nikon Z72 kit for landscapes. Now I bought the Olympus for macro, specifically for bugs, because insects, because I wanted that uh, live, auto live uh, focus in so you could see what was going on. And it's brilliant for that. Um, but I wanted to know whether I'd be happy with it, taking it to Norway, going out to Scotland soon. Basically, can I get rid of my Nikon kit and use that instead? Now, my issue are, are twofold, really. Uh, first of all, it's the 20 megapixel sensor, which, and I crop a lot. So I'm wondering whether that's gonna be enough, but it does do a high res mode. And on a tripod, it will give me an 80 megapixel file. Now, I did that test um, over a couple of days, but not particularly well. And you have commented in your uh, hundreds, maybe tens <laughs> on that video to give me some advice. And I've had some really nice comments. Um, I've had some not so nice comments. And I've also had some comments that have been really helpful. And the main person who have done that is a guy called Roger Haynes, who is an Olympus ambassador and uh, Roger took the time to email me, so thanks very much, Roger, to say that he felt it might be diffraction that was the problem, and some of you have also said that. I've also had some comments I don't really understand, um, but all of those comments have been welcome. Obviously, I, I love the, the input into the channel, um, so thanks ever so much for that. But I've taken your advice, and I thought I'd do the test again because uh, I wasn't really happy that I'd done it justice. So we've got two tripods here. I'm gonna put the Olympus on one and the Nikon on the other, because that will um, certainly alleviate one of the bits of advice that I got. In other words, people said that it wasn't taken at exactly the same moment in sunrise. Somebody said lights came on in chroma pier between two exposures. I don't remember that happening, but that could possibly be true. I've taken the camera strap off the Olympus. And the other issue was I wasn't aware of the effects of F11 on a micro full thirds lens because that obviously has the equivalent of being F16, F22-ish, which means that diffraction is gonna be a more of a problem. Now diffraction is caused by light bending around the aperture ring, around the aperture blades. So the more you shut it down, the more the light bends and therefore the more soft it is. So what I wanna to do today, I'm gonna to shoot the Nikon F11, like I usually do, and the Olympus, we're gonna shoot a 5.6 and F8. I'm gonna do a high res version of both as well, and I'm gonna take them into Lightroom and we'll compare them all, uh, and we'll see whether actually the Olympus is actually gonna be good enough. So let me get set up and I'll talk you through what we're doing. Darling, you've been on my mind Gonna love you to the end of time And I know you're the one Our story's just begun I'm never gonna let you go Right, I've got both cameras set up. They're both on, on two separate tripods. I've bought two tripods plus a tripod for you today so that we can take the pictures as close as possible together. I mean, this is gonna do one shot. The Olympus is gonna do eight, I think it is. So obviously there's gonna be some kind of delay, but that's as close as we can get. So we're not affected by any changes in light, which is something that somebody mentioned before. Right, so they're both on 200 ISO, F11, 15th of a second on the Nikon. We've got a 50th of a second at 5.6 on the Olympus. Right, so that's now set up on high res. You can see it's flashing, it's on tripod. So we're gonna press both of these together. Press, press. Actually, I wanna photograph this now, so let me just do that. I'll show you this picture when I do the Nikon and I'll talk to you in a second about 
which camera I prefer to use. That's important. There's only one thing I know for sure. Right, so we've now got F11 at a 15th of a second, 64 ISO for this. This is going to be the best quality I can get. And this is on 200 ISO, which is a recommended uh, ISO. It's the lowest it goes, I think. Um, but we're looking at 180th of a second, so really quick at 5.6. So the difference is going to be the aperture. That's going to we cut out the diffraction, which I think was the cause last time. So I'm going to shoot some at 5.6 with this, some with F8 with this, um, maybe some with F4. F11 with this. I've chosen this scene because we've got a beach here because I, I want to see how they blend and I don't think they blend very well. I did that last thing I found out last time that actually what happens is we get kind of this long exposure effect. It wouldn't even work handheld. Um, but I've also got the pier, which has got some straight bits, some bits that are really sharp. We've got some reflection off the glass. We've got some windows that we can see through to really look at that fine detail and we've got some clouds. This is the time I normally photograph, so it needs to be a real life test, not particularly scientific. I could just put it in front of a chart. I don't want to do that. I want to see how I can use both of these cameras uh, in my daily work. And in actual fact, this is a lot more fiddly already, but I'm going to do a straightforward 20 megapixel one as well, just so that we know and we can compare. And it's really going to become, really going to go down to how much I crop, and I crop quite a lot. But I like this camera a lot, but I love it for macro, I love it for sports. And it's okay for, uh, for landscapes, I think. But this is the one I'm kind of going to because it's easier to use. Three, two, one, go. That's really quick, actually, for a high resolution image. So that's okay, it's busy, I can't use it now, but then again, landscapes, you don't necessarily need to do that. So that's okay. I've um, got completely clear sky now, so I'll be able to look at the noise, I guess, as well. But that is gonna work. Right, let me just do some more on the Olympus. Uh, so we've got some files to have a look at, and then we'll go back to Lightroom. Oh, by the way, another comment that I got, which, I want to explain. Somebody said, well, you're comparing an old Olympus to a newer Nikon, and that's kind of true. Um, that's obviously an EM1X, and the, the latest Olympus is an OM1 Mark II, but <laughs> I can't afford to buy them both. I, I haven't been given one to test. This is a camera that I bought, uh, and it's as close as I'm going to get. It's going to give me an idea though, I think, hopefully, roughly as, as to what I want to do. I don't think a, that's a lot newer than this, but it's a full frame sensor and that's a micro four thirds. That's the only difference. I am, by the way, just going to move the camera so I can get some of this sky in because I am also interested with a micro four thirds camera sensor how it copes with the dynamic range, how it copes with the color range. Um, and that, that's something I've mentioned before because I had a medium format camera once upon a time, which I felt coped better than the CSC sensor with very high contrast scenes at sunrise where you've got these subtle colors in the, sky, in the sky. So that's the reason, another reason for testing it out. If I'm not getting correct color rendition, I'm not going to be using that. I, I do think I will get it. Having said that, I do think I will. Um, and whether we can notice any difference, I don't know. But I'm going to test it anyway. So let's just do the final one. Well, these lovely god rays coming down here now. The pier is really good because it's obviously sharp. So it's going to be a good test. And finally, I'm going to try a handheld uh, high res shot. Last time it didn't work. I think it was too dark. It was trying to blend the, the uh, scene together. I don't know whether it worked here, I haven't tried it, but let's have a little go. So this is a handheld, um, okay, let's have a look, see what it does. We're gonna, get, I've shot a couple, by the way, some are F8, some are um, F4, 6.7, just so we've got different things to look at. This is at 5.6, 1 60th of a second. So turn the viewfinder on, otherwise I can't see anything. And we've got high res set, I think. Yep. Oh, and that's worked this time, I think. Let's have a look. Does it come? 
Still busy. Well, we might have, and that's a handheld version. So that's going to be interesting because I've seen some pictures again from Roger who has handheld stuff on a beach. Much easier than carrying free tripods around. <laughs> I must admit, hand holding is quite liberating, um, but for me, it's all about the quality. And if the quality is not good enough, I won't be doing it. But this is not too bad. I mean, it's not as dark as I normally work. It's not, sunset, sunrise is normally dark, and this you can see the sun's come up. But I'm still getting some decent images up here, I think. And it's nice to be able to just compose things differently, focus up. We've got this lovely god rays coming out. And there's the button press, but it does take a little while for it to stitch it together. But that's going to give me a 50 megapixel file as well. So without further ado, let's go back to my office and let's have a look in London. Right, okay, here we are in Lightroom, and just as I did last time, I'm going to leave these just as raw and processed. So we've got on the right the Olympus, this is a high resolution uh, version, and on the left, oh, we have the Nikon. <laughs> Let's do that. So Olympus on the right, Nikon on the left, and the first thing I'm going to do, the first thing I'm going to tell you actually. I haven't processed these at all. This is straight out of the camera. And I'm going to tell you that that already doesn't look anywhere near as sharp as that. And interestingly enough with this test, I've looked at all of these files quickly, just briefly, and all of the high res 80 megapixels are like that. And I don't really understand why it looks to me like movement. It's definitely not diffraction because this is shot at 5.6. Um, it could well be movement, but it's high resolution. It's um, yeah, high resolution tripod mode, which is what it's designed to do. Stabilization was on auto, which I presume is the right thing to do because it would hopefully turn that off. But look at the difference. I mean, it's chalk and cheese, absolutely rubbish. I don't even know I need to carry on with that. Um, I will show you some other files. So this is also the Olympus. Another one, I've oops, separated some of them out. Look, that to me, don't know, has it got a slight blur on it? Don't look, that doesn't look particularly blurry, but it's not sharp, definitely not sharp. And I really don't know why. Here's another Olympus file that's a bit sharper, actually, that one. Okay, well look, these are not taken at the same time. Um, let's just click back out of that one, see if I can find the Nikon one. Slightly blue, as you can see, but that's okay. It's just to do with the color temperature. So actually, I would still say that even though these are not exactly the same time, I can pretty much pick any of these Nikon files and they are going to look a lot, lot better than the Olympus. Um, I actually obviously prefer the colour out of the Nikon. It's more punchy. But then again, I can process these and make them look better. I think what I'll do, um, let me just show you actually. Let me just drag this in because this is the handheld version. And actually, that doesn't look anywhere near as good either, like this one. Look at these, all, none of these are particularly sharp. 
Well, that's not too bad. Is that another Olympus file? Yeah. That's that's the 20 megapixel one. Look, 5,000 um, pixels, that one. This one is the, let's have a look. There's a 480 megapixel tripod one, as is that one. And that one is so that one, and that one, and that one. Ah, okay. <laughs> right, that one is the handheld 50 meg. This one is, let's check I've got this right. This one is, so that's 20 megapixel. This one is high resolution. So I would say, looking at both of those, let's build this, let's blow this one up a little bit more. I would say, looking at those, that actually the high res version isn't great. Don't like it really. A bit too big. Bring that down a bit. Try to get these the same sizes. It is obviously difficult because they're different sizes. But look at the noise in here now. Okay. Actually, is it noise? No, it's just pixels. Look at the pixels. I mean, that's not going to be as good as quality as that, but that's not sharp, which is really interesting. So as far as I'm concerned, if I show you this Nikon file, look, I mean, look, that is just chalk and cheese, but that's 20 megapixels on the left. This is 45 megapixels on the right. But even if I drop in 100 megapixels, uh, sorry, an 80 megapixel file, which is going to take a little while to build. That's still not giving me anywhere near as good a quality as that. Um, let me just process both of these. I'll do that and I'll give you my best one and I'll talk to you again. But as far as I'm concerned, the Nikon for landscapes is the way to go. Right, so I've had a little play around with these and processed them a little bit. So on the left here, um, which is my active one. This is the Olympus high res version uh, tripod one. So this is eight megapixel and my reference or the active one is going to be the Nikon. So that's a Nikon just shot normally. These, as you can see by the clouds, are shot exactly the same time. And okay, the framing slightly different, but on two different tripods. As you saw, um, I've applied some sharpening to both of these. Uh, just process them. So what I've done is pressed auto in Lightroom uh, and then just tweaked it a little bit. So you can see that if I enlarge that, so they're roughly the same size. I mean, look, to, I, I, I don't know what's happened. I'll be honest with you. Um, the Nikon is as I would expect. The Olympus, that looks to me a little bit, and you can see here, that's camera shake, but every single one was exactly the same. And I don't know why it's on the tripod. The tripod is locked down. You saw me do it. Okay. Now, one of the clips I've shown you, I did press the button a little bit hurriedly, uh, but I can assure you that I did them off camera as well by pressing them gently. So I don't know whether it's got anything to do with the stabilization and I'm going to have to do it yet again. I don't know. Um, but there we go, that's the Nikon, and uh, that should be the reference one. So let's just click on this one. This is the uh, 20 megapixel normal file. Let's just get that out. So this is the normal one, I think. I might remember the way I ordered these, which again, the Nikon is better, sharper. Um, you can see a bit of movement. This could actually, that must be then, I would imagine the file size of it. I would imagine that's the 50 megapixel handheld one because it has smoothed the sea out a little bit. You can see the different exposures that maybe it's blended together here, but that's 50 megapixel and that's 45, you know, and then this one, so that's a straightforward look, 20 megapixel and actually, it looks the best out of all of them. <laughs> so my conclusion is that the handheld resolution mode on the Olympus OM-D E-M1X 
is not as good as a 45 megapixel Nikon and a 45 megapixel Nikon sensor full frame smashes the um, 20 megapixel sensor out of the water. Uh, it's debatable of, as to whether um, you need that many megapixels. If you're looking at, at them like that, they look the same, don't they? So if you had, if you can imagine a big print of those looking from this distance away, then you're not going to have an awful lot of distance, uh, difference. And this is this is what's known as pixel peeping. And yeah, a, a, a Nikon's always going to beat uh, a, an Olympus at that. Got the same bit of no, what is up here? Looking at the windows there. Um, again, look, reflection off there, reflection off there. <laughs> it's, I don't understand it. It's seeing bits that the Nikon is not seeing as well. I don't really, although these weren't taken exactly the same time, so I guess we can discount that a little bit, but they weren't far off. Uh, there's the, um, Excuse me if you can hear snoring, it's not me, it's my dog. <laughs> I don't think that's far off. I think it was taken. That one might have been taken at the same time. Um, but there we go. I still think, and I'm, I'm sure, that the Nikon is the camera I'm going to be using. Having said that, the Olympus is brilliant for macro. Far, far better than the Nikon Z7 II. It's far better... I would imagine at wildlife photography, although I haven't tried it. So the next step is going to probably be a 40, 150 mil zoom for the Olympus. But if anybody has got any ideas about what's going on here, please let me know. Um, or if you've got an OM1 Mark II, you fancy lending me for a week and I'll do this test again, um, then we'll try it. We'll try it. It could even be the lens, couldn't it? I guess. But it just, I'm afraid, Looks like the Nikon is going to be staying in my bag for landscapes. There's no way I'm changing to Olympus. So thanks ever so much for watching. Anyway, um, I've, I've enjoyed doing this test, but I, I think I've proven the Nikon is far superior. Um, so if you haven't watched the previous video, go and give it a look. Until next week, thanks ever so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you next week. Ta-da.